Property investors, be afraid. Be very afraid. And not just because we're here. I'm Rob B. He's Rob D. And we are from Property Hub. Yeah, there's loads of property investment advice out there, which is great, except when it's not. There's lots of terrible advice doing the rounds. We're here to tell you what you need to watch out for. The first piece of bad property advice you hear all the time is, you don't need money to buy property. Well, hate to break it to you, but you actually do. We dedicated a whole video to debunking the myth of no money down deals. So make sure you click through and watch that one. This advice is dangerous because it can send you off on a path of taking far bigger risks than you need to. And it risks putting you off the idea of property altogether by making unrealistic promises that then turn out not to be true in reality and cause you to lose faith in property as an investment when you really shouldn't. So you don't need money to buy is the first bad piece of advice to watch out for. Another poor piece of advice is being told that property prices always go up. They don't. Property prices sometimes fall and sometimes crash. You only have to go back to 2008 and look at the charts there to see that property prices can fall. Now the good news is, in the long term, property prices have to date always gone up. But there are years where property prices do dip or, as I've said, sometimes crash. So don't believe that you can buy at any time and it's going to be a great time to buy. There are points in a property cycle that you should probably avoid investing. The good news is, that doesn't happen very often and the majority of the time, it's a great time to invest. The third piece of bad property advice, which you hear all the time from people who aren't involved in property, but just have this belief, which is that you can't go wrong with bricks and mortar. People say that all the time. And believe me, you can go very wrong with bricks and mortar. You can't take the view that just because bricks are involved, any investment is gonna be a good one not the case. We've already talked about one potential way you can go wrong, which is buying at the wrong time. You also see people go wrong all the time by buying overseas property in markets that they know nothing about and making big losses when those schemes turn out not to perform as expected. You could also go very wrong by buying properties that are drastically overpriced and by buying properties where the deal is structured in such a way that you are exposed to far more risk than you should be. So you've got to be careful with this advice. Yes, it's true that over the long term, property is a stable investment and historically it's performed well, but that does not mean that you can just go out and buy whatever you like and everything will be fine. It won't be. Another poor piece of advice is being told, don't buy, prices will crash soon. Most people don't know when prices are going to crash. And as I've already touched on, the majority of years, property prices increase. And actually holding off from investing could cost you a lot of money because property prices could have gone up and you could have made a rental profit. So when do you buy then? Well, most of the time. But there are some points in the property cycle that aren't as attractive for investment and you possibly even should avoid investing. So how do you know when to invest and when not to invest? The good news is, We've put together a free course on our website about market cycles and the 18-year property cycle. Now, if you're not familiar with the 18-year property cycle, you need to be because it will tell you when property is expected to go up, when it's expected to boom, and also when it's expected to crash. If you empower yourself with this knowledge, you're going to be ahead of most property investors. There's no catches here. The course is free. The link to the course is in the description below. Save that link for later and check it out. Another piece of really bad advice that you don't hear people talking about in general, but is very common inside the property industry is the lender doesn't care as long as the mortgage is paid. In other words, feel free to breach the terms of your mortgage or commit mortgage fraud. It's fine. As long as you pay the mortgage, no one is going to check. This comes up all the time with situations like somebody using a residential mortgage to buy a buy-to-let property because the rates are cheaper or moving into a buy-to-let property to live in because it's more convenient or it's easier to get the funding. In that situation, people often say, well, as long as you keep paying the mortgage, the lender's not going to care. Well, they do care. They do check and if you do breach the terms of your mortgage they can demand that you instantly repay the mortgage in full and share that information with other lenders so it's impossible for you to get borrowing in future using mortgages to invest in property is a really powerful strategy but because it's so powerful it's not something that you should abuse next on our list you should really avoid advice from friends or family who just read the papers and pass it off as knowledge. Somebody reading a few headlines and passing it off as advice is actually more common than you'd realize. And your friends and family are not immune from that. They will tell you their opinions on property investment. And in property, most people 
have an opinion, but it doesn't make them an expert. And also you need to be careful with friends and family because they will project their own fears or big ambitions onto you. So if they don't like property or it makes them nervous, they will try and talk you out of it. Not because they're being mean, they think they're actually trying to help. But also, if someone thinks it's a great way to get rich quickly, they'll also tell you that because they want to help. The truth is, property is not get rich quick and property isn't awful. It's somewhere in the middle. It can be a great investment tool, but your friends and family, because they care about you, will tend to have more polarized opinions on property investment. While they should remain your friends and family, they shouldn't be your investment guides. And the final piece of bad property advice to watch out for is any advice at all that comes from somebody who hasn't taken the time to understand your goals before giving you the advice. Everybody has different ambitions, different things that they're trying to achieve, different ways they want to achieve them, different things that they're afraid of, different skills that they have. And until you understand where someone's coming from, it's impossible to tell them what they should do. But the property industry is full of people who'll be very quick to tell you that you must do things a certain way, or that something else is always a terrible idea. Or they'll take the approach that's worked for them and assume that that is the best way that everyone else must follow. But that's not the case. If somebody is giving you a firm black and white point of view without having asked you some basic questions about yourself first, you should not just accept that advice as the truth. Don't just reject it out of hand either. There might be some useful ideas in there, but all advice should be specific to the person receiving it. Therefore, if someone's not in a position to do that, by definition, it's bad advice. So there you go, some truly shocking advice there. You know what else would be shocking if you didn't subscribe to this YouTube channel? And you know what? Not press that bell either. So make sure you do that now.